Did you know that operating a forklift is a specialized job that requires training and authorization by your employer to become a qualified operator? This training video is an introduction to the procedures and safety protocols all employees need to know in the operation of any form of powered industrial truck, or more commonly known as forklifts. This program will cover all required OSHA training material, including the contents of the OSHA standard, types and characteristics of forklifts, pre-operational inspections, basic driving, stability, and load handling, fuels and batteries, and attachments. OSHA estimates that tens of thousands of employees are injured or killed due to forklift accidents, injuries, and deaths. To reduce the number of powered industrial truck accidents, OSHA revised and updated its regulation 29 CFR 1910.178. OSHA defines powered industrial trucks as any specialized industrial truck powered by electric motors or internal combustion engines. This revised OSHA regulation requires initial forklift operator training before any employee can be allowed to operate such equipment. In addition, an employee must go through retraining in case of involvement in an accident or a near miss. The operator is observed driving in an unsafe manner, the operating conditions or the equipment changes, and every three years. In addition to your classroom training on powered industrial trucks, hands-on driving training and a driving evaluation should follow. The OSHA regulations are to be made available to all employees. Contact your training instructor or your supervisor to review copies of them. There are many different types and styles of forklift. It is important that you understand the trucks your employer utilizes. Familiarize yourself with and reference the operator's manual that comes with the truck you will be using. Powered industrial trucks are divided into seven classes based on their basic functions and characteristics. Class 1, Electric Counterbalanced Trucks. It has no exhaust and is often used indoors. Class 2, narrow aisle lift trucks and order pickers. If the operator is raised, they must use fall protection. Class three, electric powered hand trucks or pallet jacks. This only includes powered pallet jacks, including both the walked behind jack and the ridden jack. Class four, solid rubber tired combustion fueled counterbalanced forklifts. These are only to be used on smooth surfaces, usually asphalt or concrete. Class 5, Pneumatic Tired Combustion Fueled Counterbalanced Forklifts. These can be used on unpaved surfaces, but not rough terrain. Class 6, Tow Vehicles, such as the ones used at airports to tow planes and luggage carts. These do not lift loads. Class 7, Counterbalanced Rough Terrain Forklifts. These are commonly used on construction sites. These seven classes of powered industrial trucks were established based on their different handling and safety characteristics. It is important that you understand the specific type of vehicle you will be operating. You will only be able to operate the classification of truck that you've been trained on. All trucks have hazardous location designations. These designations inform operators if the truck may be used in various flammable, combustible, or hazardous areas. These areas should be properly marked, and any vehicle not meeting the proper safety qualifications should not be operated in these areas. Consult the OSHA Standard 1910.178 Table N1 for more information concerning designated areas. Before the start of each shift, equipment inspection should be done. If anything is found to be defective, the vehicle should be taken out of service. You should also notify your supervisor of the problem. 
to assist with your inspection of the equipment, an inspection checklist form should be used and is usually provided by your employer. These checklists may also be obtained in the operator's manual or by the equipment manufacturer. A sample checklist has also been provided with this training program. The inspections checklist includes all safety items that need to be in working order. They include lights, horn, brakes, backup alarms, and seat belts. Other items to include in your inspection checklist are any moving parts, load supporting parts such as the mast, chains, and carriage, fluid levels, tires, steering, overhead guard, backrest, and any other items recommended by the manufacturer of the equipment. When conducting your equipment inspection, the first items to check are those that can be done without the engine running. If all these items check out properly, then move on to the items to be checked with the engine running. Put the forklift through its normal maneuvers and check all its functions. Be especially cautious not to place your hands in areas of moving parts or between the uprights of the mast. Seat belts must be worn on all powered industrial trucks. If your forklift is not equipped with one, contact the manufacturer to obtain one. While operating any powered industrial truck, it is important to keep all body parts inside the operator's area at all times. You must operate the vehicle in designated and safe areas only. Make sure that the driving surface is clean and free of debris or spills. You need to pay close attention and be alert of any obstructions in the aisles you are operating on or of low-hanging items that you may damage. You also need to be observant for lights, sprinkler heads, pipes, or other overhead items. Always maintain a safe speed. Forklifts should never be driven faster than would allow for a safe stopping distance. The maximum safe speed should be equivalent to a fast-paced walk. You should also gauge a safe operating speed based on driving conditions, pedestrians, and loads. When following behind another forklift, maintain a distance of three truck lengths. When coming to an intersection or a doorway, you should always slow down and alert others of your approach by sounding your horn. Most powered industrial trucks are designed to be operated by one-person drivers. Do not give rides to others. Do not allow any person to stand or pass underneath a raised load. Do not drive up to anyone standing in front of a fixed object. Always be alert of pedestrians near you and give them the right of way. Be sure to always look in all directions before you begin to operate your vehicle. Some forklifts have rear wheel steering that is different in operating than front wheel steering. Trucks tend to swing wide and you must compensate for this. When crossing curbs or railroad tracks, do so at an angle. This helps keep at least two wheels in contact with the ground to prevent tipping. Each forklift and detachment will have a permanent nameplate that states its rated capacity. These nameplates should be easily readable and the rated capacity should never be exceeded. A forklift's rated capacity is based on the fulcrum principle. Like a seesaw, the front wheels are the base of the fulcrum. If the load is too heavy or too far from the fulcrum, the forklift will tip forward. The stability of each forklift is determined by ever-changing factors based on the stability triangle of the forklift. The front axle acts as the base of the triangle and supports the weight of the load. The sides of the stability triangle meet at the point where the forklift steers, either at a single wheel or in the middle of the steering axle on the four-wheeled models. The center of gravity for the forklift is changed by the load and by momentum. 
The forklift will tip over if either of these factors force the center of gravity outside the stability triangle. Each load has its own load center. This is the center of its weight mass. This distance greatly affects the load capacity of forklifts. The nameplate will state the load center measurement in which the capacity is based. In most cases, this is 24. This means that the load center should be no further than 24 inches away from the mast of the forklift. If the load center is further away, then the load capacity will diminish. Tilting the mast forward also changes the stability triangle. The mast should never be tilted forward when raised unless it is over a rack or other supporting object. A forklift can also tip over without a load. When a forklift is in motion without a load, the center of gravity is near the rear of the vehicle and very close to the side of the stability triangle. At this point, any quick turn or even an unstable driving surface could cause the forklift to tip over. Another aspect of the stability triangle is the vertical stability or the line of action. This is a vertical line that runs through the forklift's center of gravity. If the line of action shifts outside the stability triangle, the forklift will tip over. Additional factors in keeping the line of action within the stability triangle include the placement of the load on the forks, how high the load is raised, the angle of the floor underneath the forklift, and momentum. In the event of a forklift tipping, do not jump free. You could be crushed beneath the forklift or the load. Brace yourself, hold on to the steering wheel and pull yourself tight up to it. Keep all parts of your body inside the operator's area. Before picking up a load, it should be inspected to make sure it is properly secured and won't shift during travel. You also need to make sure the load is within the weight limit for your forklift. When approaching a load, stop about 12 inches before reaching the load. Make sure your forks are adjusted as wide as possible for the load. Square up on its center and level the forks at the height appropriate for lifting the load. Drive slowly forward until the load rests against the mast. Lift the load high enough to clear the floor or rack and then tilt the mast back slightly to a traveling position. If necessary, lower the load to a few inches above the ground so as to clear all objects while traveling. If the load obstructs your view, drive in reverse or use a spotter to make sure your pathway is clear and safe. Before using a ramp, make sure it can support the load. Use only approved portable ramps or dock plates. Be sure they are securely in place before using them. When transporting a load on a slope, always keep the forks pointed uphill. When coming down a slope, always do so in reverse so as not to risk losing your load. Never drive across a slope at an angle with or without a load. This can cause the forklift to tip over. Some powered industrial trucks may not be driven on a slope. Please consult the operator's manual for more information. Before driving onto a rail car, truck, or trailer, set the vehicle's brakes. Next, block its wheels. Make sure trailers are supported under their kingpin with a fixed jack or the tractor truck. Finally, check the floor surface to make sure it will support the weight of the truck and your load. <laughs> If you are going to be away from the forklift at a distance of 25 feet, the vehicle needs to be shut off. Place the transmission in neutral or park, apply the parking brake, and lower the forks all the way to the ground. Be sure that you are not blocking any exit paths or firefighting equipment. If working in a rail yard, do not park closer than 8 feet from the railroad tracks. If parked on a slope, make sure to place blocks behind the wheels.
Before operating an electric powered truck, make sure the battery connections are on tight. Next, check the battery's electrolyte level. Be sure to use personal protective equipment such as eye protection, face shield, and gloves. The battery should be removed from the vehicle or the battery compartment needs to remain open while charging. When charging batteries, be sure to do so in designated no smoking areas. Charging batteries produces flammable hydrogen gas, so use care to avoid causing sparks or flames. You need to leave the charger off until you have connected it to the battery and again have it off when you disconnect it from the battery. When replacing a battery, make sure to secure it in place. A loose battery during operation can overturn a vehicle. The refueling of vehicles that run on propane, gasoline, or diesel fuels should only be done in designated no smoking areas and the engines must be turned off. For propane fueled trucks, remove the propane tanks prior to refilling. After refilling, make sure the tank location pin is properly aligned before securing the tank to the truck. All combustion fueled trucks should have an annual emissions test to monitor their emission levels. This is especially important for trucks operated indoors. Be sure the work area you are in is well ventilated to prohibit the buildup of carbon monoxide. Approved employee platforms may be used to elevate personnel. These platforms are the only method for lifting anyone standing or sitting on the forks. Other attachments may be used if they are approved and have a nameplate stating their capacity. It is important to remember that attachments will change the load center and diminish the capacity of the forklift. Always determine the correct capacity of your equipment before lifting any load. Operating forklifts and any powered industrial truck is an important job. Use the knowledge and skills presented in this video to operate forklifts in a professional and safe manner.